Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, we're doing phase three today. A recap of phase one and phase two. Phase one was practically just going over what van to get, what kind of layout, what kind of products you want. Phase two was going over insulation, the different types you could possibly do, what I did, and then uh, the rattle trap and the sub flooring. Phase three, like I said, this is going to probably be the longest phase, but phase three is pretty much the framing walls that I use or what different types of walls you can use and the rough wiring and the rough plumbing. This is gonna be a lot of image showing up here and there's going to be a lot of um, showing what my build was like and I'll explain uh, each each one as I go through. So for the framing, I've seen many different types of framing done. I'll start with what I did on my framing. Your end result is going to need to have a finished wall. When you build a house, you have a wall. Against that wall, you'll have technically uh, in insulation inside the the wall and then you'll have drywall and then you put taping over the drywall to make it a smooth surface you gotta sand it and then you make it a smooth surface and you can paint and do things from there or old school wallpaper if you really want to here we're working inside of a van and you'll see a lot of a lot of people use shiplap and things like that but you want it all even because the ribs inside of the van are different thicknesses and I'll see if I can get an image of that on my build. The ribs are different things. It's like the main rib in the middle of the van. Now, I'm only speaking strictly Pro Masters, but typically sprinters are the same way. It's a lot thicker. It comes out like four inches from the actual sheet metal. So I wanted to stay all on that line. I've seen other people expose that rib and they just brought their wall back a little bit. You can see that rib inside of their build. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted it to feel more of a home type uh, situation. It's totally up to you and that's why the layout in phase one is so important. It's kind of like making decisions. Uh, now you can also make decisions as you go, but it might be a little difficult to change things up. For framing, you want to attach a main frame up against the metal ribs and you want to use like a metal screw that can drill into it a pretty thick screw and make sure it catches really well and obviously not go into a hole you may want to pre-drill the wood itself and then you can uh, screw into the metal you want to get a self-tapping metal screw that'll get in there and like i said uh, a good thread on it and you can really get in there and, and have it uh, on a good hold. The framing that I use is we actually cut plywood into three inch strips. The reason we use three quarter inch plywood as our frame is because plywood can bend and flex. The sides of the van will kind of do this. They'll start narrow, widen out, and go back to narrow. So we wanted to kind of have that effect in the wall more drastic in my hand it's not that drastic and the reason the reason you want to run strips vertically if you use like a shiplap like i have here they run horizontally so you're going to need to have something staple into a vertical frame it's just easier doing it that way this also runs back into the insulation that you used if you went with uh if you went with the fiberglass insulation or the, or the denim insulation you didn't have a way to stick it in there, you may have to have some sort of strapping inside the wall to hold that into place. I've seen a couple other videos do it this way. It's not a bad way to do it, it's just the way I didn't do it. I personally wouldn't like to do it that way because it's kind of a pain. Sometimes that fiberglass insulation does give a better does gives a better insulation uh, depending on how you use it. But how I did it was I took the strips and I made it into a frame and like I said, I'll show the image up here and you can see it. From there, I actually connected like my closet right here, my shower and actually my, my upper cabinets. I attached it all to those frames. Yeah, that's how it all worked. The, th the only thing that I actually used two by fours on was the bed frame. Uh, that was gonna have the most amount of weight. It was gonna have me and possibly another other another person because uh, it can sleep too so I framed it in two by fours and I'll show you I'll take my GoPro there right now I have it in sections of three for for the reasons I wanted them the rest of the walls are actually done with just three-quarter inch plywood you can't see that there but 
uh, it's they're all done with three quarter inch plywood and I cleated all of them when you put plywood on plywood if you just connected it that way it would just kind of it would move it wouldn't be that good so you put a cleat in there and I'll explain what a cleat is right now uh, I'll show you what a cleat is right here it's pretty much a piece of wood that you can drill into from either direction on that wood on the 90 degree that's pretty much how it stays in the place so you attach it to the frame of the wall and then you attach it uh, to the ground using a cleat. Also with the kitchen, I used cleats as well. The kitchen is split up into threes. Obviously I have my countertop. At the bottom, underneath the, um, the kitchen cabinets are just three quarter inch plywood and then they're cleated to the ground and then I built the drawers separately and I slid them all in. That's all that is. And then you put the face on separately and bada bing bada boom you got yourself a kitchen upper cabinets are custom built and i advise everybody else to do a custom build job when it comes to your upper cabinets it's um a painstaking process and there was a lot of trial and error but once you get the angle of the of the top because it's not going to be straight you're going to have to go at like an angle but once you get that, use that as a template for the rest of your upper cabinets, and then you can build them all out, however many you want or how long you want them, and then you can you make them outside, and then you put it all up. You're going to need, obviously, another person, maybe two other people to hold up the cabinets while you put them into place. What I did is we knew we were going to attach it to that frame because the frame is right on the metal, and that can hold plenty. So what we did was is we built them outside obviously. We got the dimensions we needed to get. And then on the back side of them you have a piece of strapping on, on both on the on the back, two pieces of strapping and we drilled into we drilled uh, we just connected them. We put screws in from the back of the strapping into the frame and that held that that holds up up the cabinets. Uh, in every section you put like two two screws on the top, two screws on the bottom and you do that all the way across and that holds up the cabinets just fine. You're not going to be putting too much weight up there pretty much how all of the framing walls are done the kitchen walls the upper cabinets the ceiling i did first in the ceiling everybody is different when it comes to the ceiling a lot of people will just put up paneling you can attach like two buys my brother just did this he attached two buys to the ceiling ribs but the same way i was talking earlier by by drilling metal screws into the metal ribs and then you can run boards across or you can actually even put a paneling if you want and you attach it right to those uh, right up to that the two by like a two by three that you attach it and then you're going to that'll all that'll all keep it even and then you just attach it right to that piece of wood and there and voila you have yourself a ceiling i wanted something a little more design like a design aspect to it so i wanted to run these strips i came up with the idea and i wanted to do it and my dad pretty much said to me how the heck are we going to do this and i said i don't know you figure it out that was not the, the answer i probably should have given him but what what we did was is we we took birch plywood a quarter inch birch plywood i painted it white and I put it up on the ceiling. And what we did was we just kind of tacked it in with metal screws inside of inside to the uh, the ribs. And that was pretty just held up just by metal screws. Nothing nothing spectacular. Uh, we dropped the ceiling an inch and a half where the bed is. We took two by fours. And why I say an inch and a half because that's the the thickness of a two by four. We took two by fours and we just we attached them to the ribs. We we put in heavy duty. Uh, screws in through that into the rib and then we uh, attached the birch plywood to that and then we took strips of poplar plywood and we stained it a dark walnut and we took pin screws or they're like uh, I think they're called pin screws with the reason we use these is because they drill in through wood so you can just cover them up with uh, you can cover the holes up with putty to make it look like it's all it's all together. So you took a pin screw and that will go right into metal, no problem. So what we did was if that was the easy one was over the bed because we used the two buys that went up that went right up against the ribs. The difficult part was more over the over the over the living area because we didn't have two buys to connect it to. So we actually had to take those pin screws and go up through the birch plywood and have it attached to the metal rib without going through the roof. So we had to know where the metal ribs were running in the roof. Now we obviously knew where that was because we didn't put up our walls yet and they just 
uniformly go all the way across the van. So we knew that it was gonna all be in one line. Once we got one going, we can get the rest because it was all going to be in one line. I believe the screws that we used, um, Dad, let me know if I'm wrong here. An inch and a quarter? No, they must have been bigger than that. They were pretty big. Once you rip it into strips and then you go in with that screw, that held that hold up that held up the entire ceiling. So really the the strip the, the ripped plywood that we use is how is holding up that birch plywood although we tack the, the the plywood in there so that's my floating ceiling if you want to do it that way a lot of people just use panels uh they'll use birch plywood they'll paint them however they want to paint them and they'll just kind of panel them up there put a piece of wood so you don't see the seam you can do it that way that's uh, i would say the easiest way and the cheapest way to do it get a you know sheet of birch plywood quarter inch which is fine uh, and then just paint it the way you want it and then put them up and you can actually do that with all your walls too that's more into finishes and things like that uh, but it's an easy way to do it absolutely you can even do it that way um, without putting a frame in it's just and you can clean all of your walls and you can do it that way as well uh, I just wanted it more structurally stable, um, but you could do it that way. You could just panel it uh, and then have each, comp you could build everything separate and then you could just kind of put them in there in pieces. You could do it that way, uh, but I just prefer not to do it that way. Uh, that's really how the, the walls, the ceiling, the f uh, framing is done. Uh, that's how I kept everything even. Uh, how I did my bed, uh, that little the little inlet there, uh, we took a metal angle and we just tacked the metal angle in around the frame and then I put a piece of birch plywood uh, against the back. I tacked the, the, the plywood against the metal angle and then I just put a finish uh, shiplap over it. This is the shiplap. Uh, it was just a, a in the inlet was just so I could have a couple more inches to sleep on either end so I got an extra three four inches. The reason I want to go over rough wiring right now is because you want to do your wiring and then my next phase is actually going to be solar and electrical. So you want to do all of your rough wiring now and then and then when you by the time you get to phase five and you want to do all your finishes that's when you can start attaching all of your wiring. So you what I mean by rough wiring is having all of your wires laid out uh, to where you want to run them from the switches to your charge control, your batteries, from your panels, all your lighting, heater if you have an electric heater, water pump if you have water pump, anything going from your AC box or your DC box going back into all that, that all that needs wiring run. Uh, where is your wire, where, where is your, your hub gonna be? Where is it going to, where is it coming from and things like that. So you wanna lay all those wires out. I have uh, one, two, three switches here uh, on my bench that run uh, the main lights and then I have lights over my kitchen and then I have another light in my bathroom Those are those three switches for the lights and then I have another switch for lights that are over my bed I have a water pump and a fan switch over there as well So all of that has to run into you know different switches and then run But I have to run all that wiring before I put the walls in because once you put the walls in you can't run wires behind walls so you know, you have to think about all that too. So you wanna lay out all the rough wiring, know where all of your things are gonna be happening. When you put the ceiling in, for instance, you're gonna to have to cut the holes for the lighting. Uh, so you wanna make sure you have the wires dangling down. You have to put the actual light fixtures in, just have the wires hanging down. That's why you'll see on Instagram, you'll see, or uh, other photos of vans being built, you'll see these wires hanging out of the ceiling. That's what that is. They're, 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 they ran the rough wiring and then they'll put the finishes in later. Put all the rough wiring where you need to put it. Make sure you know where your water pump's gonna go, where your solar charge controller's gonna go, where your batteries are gonna go, where your switches are gonna go, where your boxes are gonna go, when I mean boxes by AC box and DC box, where your inverter's gonna go, if you're gonna have shore power, where uh, your shore power is gonna come off your inverter if you have an inverter charger, uh, where that's gonna go, where you're gonna cut the hole for that. Like I said, that's why phase one is so important because you're gonna wanna lay all that stuff out before you even get to this part, because when you get to this part and you're trying to lay it out, it's pretty difficult to go backwards than it is to move forward. So that's why it's so important to lay out all those things. I knew exactly where I wanted to put everything when it came to batteries, solar charge controller, inverter, where my water pump was gonna go, where my sink was gonna go, where my where my toilet was gonna go, where my refrigerator was gonna go. That's another thing you gotta run wires for. Your refrigerator's gonna have to hook up at some point. How's that gonna all hook up? Lay out your rough wiring. I will go into a wiring diagram on the next phase, but uh, all that good jazz, that's how you're gonna have to do it. When it comes to plumbing, I needed to run plumbing 
for my sink and my shower. Now, I run it from the water pump that's gonna pump through from the tank into my sink and into my shower. So the tubes are quite easily, I just use Snake Bite, which is, uh, you got them at Home Depot. I think I ran one pipe. I, I, I had a gravity fill go into my water tank. That's how I fill up my water tank is through a gravity fill. A gravity fill is you just dump water into your tank pretty much, and it's just a way to do it. I also have a city hookup, so I could actually hook it up to a city, I could hook up a hose to city water if I go to a campsite, or I wanna hook up to somebody's house if I'm staying there for a while. Uh, I have that option if I want to. You Then you run pipe from the tank, into the water pump, you have to turn the water pump on and the water pump will have a, a, a water line. I, I just use blue, because blue is cold, but you use a blue water line, you get it at Home Depot, and then you run that um, to your, for, for me, I used a hot water tank, so I ran that line into the hot water tank, and then you have two lines coming off the hot water tank. You have a hot and a cold, and that goes uh, goes into the sink, and also goes into the shower, and those are two separate lines, obviously. Uh, so you're gonna have to do that. If you're gonna want a shower, you're gonna have to do that as well. If you do not, if you do not want to run the hot water, which you probably should, a lot of people use propane uh, for a shower, which is great. I actually might be, I might convert to it. I don't know, but you're gonna have to vent it in some way unless you have it outside. I see a lot of people have the tankless hot water tanks uh, on their back doors and they use it as a shower, typically at like a campsite or something like that. It's not a bad idea, I kinda like it. I wouldn't do it because I live out of my van. If I did it, I would actually vent it somehow. But mine right now is an electric water tank. It just, just takes up a lot of power, so I don't use it all that much. It's actually really, really easy because once you get the equipment and you see how it runs into it, it's actually really easy because once you buy whatever you do decide on how to use it, um, you know, it's just, it just easier that way. If you have a propane tank in the back and you want to run it into your sink as well, you can just run it right, you know, just two different directions is kind of how I'm trying to explain it. Hope that comes across okay. But you want to make sure you you uh, you run the, the pipes in for that. Again, you don't want to put the walls in without, without having uh, things ready to go. All right, so that was phase three. Um, uh, like I said, it was it, it was a lot to go over. I'm sure I'm gonna have questions, and by all means, please uh, send me some questions. I will try and answer them the best that I can. Phase four is probably my least knowledgeable phase, but it's a very important phase. It's gonna go over solar and electrical. Uh, so let's get going with that tomorrow, and I will see you then.